Hey everybody, Sean here, and today we'll take a closer look at someone who's been in the spotlight a lot lately, Ravi Zacharias. There's no shortage of footage on Ravi, and people have called him out in the past on various things. Everybody from Service Christie to John MacArthur. And recently, even more people have been speaking about the revealed truth of his promiscuous past. You can go online and find many articles. Women have even spoken up about this, as we see here. But not only that, there's several massage therapists that have spoken up as well. And as this investigation continues, more and more things seem to be coming to surface. They also found hundreds of photos of women that a married man should not have as well. With all the evidence, this is obviously a very serious situation. I've watched several videos with different Christians' opinions on this topic, and I thought I'd share a few of my own as well. And at the end of this video, we can talk about what we as Christians can learn from all of this. This kind of sin is serious to God. When we read 1 Corinthians 6, 18, God says to flee from this and shows that all other sin is outside the body. And this sin is against your own body. And that body is also the temple of the Holy Spirit. The fact is that most men are weak in this area, and I'm by no means sticking up for his moral failure here, but people do fall at times. We all have sins we struggle with, and some people struggle more and or longer than others. Even solid Christian teachers can fall bad. Think about King David in the Bible who was called a man after God's own heart. And yet, he fell hard and slept with Bathsheba and then had her husband, which was his soldier, killed. Now, from what the reports say about Ravi, this has gone on for quite some time and with a lot of different women. Was this just a sin struggle where one bad decision turned into another bad decision and it just snowballed into a train wreck of a sinful life? Or was he actually living a double life? Something to consider is that when he was given a chance to respond to the accusations made against him, he lied and blamed the accuser. A truly humble man of God would admit his error and step down from ministry, but that's not what happened. Was that just another sin to add to the list that happened because of pride and out of fear of his ministry ending? Or is he one of the men spoken of in Jude 1.4 that says certain men have secretly slipped in among us and they're godless men who change the grace of our God into a license for immorality? We can examine Ravi's fruit and come to our own conclusion, but only God truly knows the state of Ravi's salvation. I'm going to leave three links to other channels reviewing the current situation. Spencer Smith has a very forgiving video that shows a lot of grace. Dave Wood has a very middle ground approach that tries to understand the topic of sin in a believer's life. And Mike Winger goes into great detail to show that without a shadow of a doubt, there is no way Ravi was a true believer based on the detailed and sinister ongoing actions of him. And although my heart wants to side with Dave Wood and be hopeful that Ravi was a believer that fell into terrible sin, at the end of the day, my spirit is more aligned with Mike Winger because the degree of deceit that went on appears to be much worse than simply falling into sin. But stepping away from the recent topic, this isn't the only issue I've seen that is of concern into relation whether Ravi truly was a man of God. The fact that he spoke in a Mormon church and got a standing ovation says a lot. As we covered in the video regarding the Baptist preacher converting to Mormonism, this faith is 100% not Christian. They say that God evolved and that as man now is, God once was. As God is, now man may be. He shouldn't have been preaching in a Mormon church except to call them out and preach the true gospel message, but instead he got a standing ovation. There are many reports showing that he lied about his credentials and did not have the degrees he claimed to have. You can actually go to the site Ravi Watch and see so much that exposes his deception. John MacArthur called out Ravi's superficial Christianity, comparing it to someone like Carl Lentz. 
And regardless if you oppose Josh from Service Christie and his aggressive approach in exposing people, he does have a lot of accurate points in his video on Ravi that was done back in 2019. Ravi seemed to be a very compromising so-called Christian. Aside from the Mormon incident, he refers to false teacher Joyce Meyer as a great Bible teacher, that Saddleback Church is one of the greatest churches, and that false teaching, ecumenical, yoga-supporting, pope-loving Rick Warren is a respected friend and teacher. He supports Henry Nowen, who is a mystical, ecumenical Catholic, and says that he's one of the great saints of our age. Henry is quoted as saying that anybody can come to God in their own way, doesn't have to be through Jesus. And Rabbi has supported numerous other false teachers as well. Point is that he seemed to be more ecumenical than people may have believed and wanted to fit into all circles, may it be Mormons, Catholics, or false Christian teachers. And that says a lot about who he really was and what he stood for. Scripture warns us over and over again about wolves in sheep's clothing. So these wolves aren't always going to be as obvious as some are. So, at the end of all of this, what can we say? Was Ravi a deceiver that was leading a horrible double life? Or was Ravi someone that fell into sin and pride or fear prevented him from coming forward and repenting? Truly, only God knows. God's love, grace, and forgiveness is beyond what we can imagine. And if Ravi would have repented and stepped down from ministry, God would have forgiven him. But he didn't. So what can we learn from this? For the sake of learning, let's take a hypothetical view that Ravi was saved and fell into sin, and by failing to confess his sin, it got worse and worse. We have to realize the power sin can have in our lives, and by failing to confess it, things will get worse. James 5.16 tells us to confess our sins or faults to one another so that we can be healed. And 1 John 1.9 tells us that if we confess our sins to God, that He is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But if we don't confess our sin, the devil has a foothold in our lives and his lies can take over. Look, Rav, this is between you and God, nobody else. God is with you in this struggle. Just think about the damage to your ministry if you reveal this stuff. Think about the black eye you'll give God and Christianity and the people that may be hurt. You're still doing a lot of good things and this will be over soon. And before you know it, one sin leads to another, and now you're in so deep that sin has taken over who you are. Once again, only God knows the truth about Ravi, but evidence doesn't look good. But if you have sin in your life, don't think it's about being a superhero and dealing with it yourself. Be humble and confess it to your brothers and sisters in Christ and to God and allow him to restore you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So, as always, feel free to leave your thoughts and comments below. And until next time, take care and God bless.